So this is going to be a surprise podcast. I decided I wanted to do this while I was preparing for a couple other podcasts. And uh, while that happened, I discovered that I discovered that there are two new sips on the block. Sip seven and eight. Uh, seven is for staking budget for landowners, and eight is for Pear City Jam. I have not read through all of these yet, so this will be the first time I read through them. But uh, let's let's get after it. So the scope of the talk today is going to be a review and analysis on the two new SIPs that just released, seven and eight. And uh, introductions, my name is Lanzer. I am president of Meta Worlds and the podcast host for Sandow. Sandow is a podcast about the sandbox DAO, DAO being decentralized autonomous organization. It's pretty much a a community group centered around the sandbox game. The sandbox is like a Minecraft meets the Sims meets Second Life. And uh, Meta Worlds, we are a a studio. We publish we publish two games so far. Floor Droppers and Lava Defense. And we're about to publish our third portal run for the Builder Challenge 2. And I am heavily, heavily into the DAO uh, because it's the cross section of my my expertise as a business person, an entrepreneur. I've been in government for a long time and uh, I've been in contract negotiations and, and all sorts of stuff in my professional life. So I love what the DAO represents. I love how the DAO comes together and operates and I want to I want to grow with it. I want to be a part of this. So here I am. I've been a podcast host a number of times for video games and esports stuff and all sorts of things. So yeah. That's me. So the disclaimer is I do not represent the Sandbox game or the Sandbox Foundation. I speak for myself as a SanFam community member. I am not anyone's financial or legal advisor. Nothing I say is to be taken as financial or legal advice. With that bit of administrative out of the way, this is a slide I just put together. Uh, DAO scoreboard. So I used to have a road to DAO, and that kind of was a text version of this. But but here is uh, the count so far. So one SIP is in draft on the forums. That's SIP X. It hasn't been numbered yet. That's creator first by Cyril. Uh, Kirill, I mean. Apologize, Kirill. He was featured in Sandow podcast... Sandow Podcast. I don't have my future episodes. Do I accidentally removed it? Uh, Sandow Podcast 3, I believe it was. A creator, we did deep dive into the creator first SIP. Uh, there are two SIPs pending activation, meaning they've been submitted. They they are in between submitted and gone to community vote. Those are the two that are just right now pending. Um, let's call this activation. Okay. So those are the two we'll be reviewing today. Uh, one SIP is currently open for voting, SIP number six. And good news is that it is reached a quorum. Get a snapshot of it. It reached a quorum, so 31 of 30 million votes. Congratulations again, Pepe, for Magic Palette. And 99% yes, so for the less than 24 hours, high percentage of that one's going to pass. So great news there. Five SIPs have closed. Zero who are not approved, and five were approved. So all five, that, all five SIPs that closed were approved. And I will have the Dow checkbook here done soonish, uh, which is more of like an accounting version of, of 
what's the budget, what's the expenses, and what's left. All right, let's get into it. Sip seven and eight. All right, sip seven, staking budget for landowners. Just put that up here. TLDR, at the sandbox, we were used to reward our landowners with assets and sand-based and sand based on their involvement in the ecosystem. As the community noted, the staking amount has been reduced a lot during the past months, which deters a fraction of the community to hold their land and stake sand. We are proposing to use a portion of the DAO's budget to increase the staking amount to better reward the actual community. Huh. Cool. I have noticed that, just like everyone else has, if you are a, either a landowner or you are a regular staking pool person, staking in the sandbox pools, you've noticed a sharp decline in the past 12 months from what used to be I don't know, it was like double or triple what it was now, and it's just slowly declined month after month until now it's a fraction of what it used to be. So that's very true. That is very true. Why? The sand the Dow should focus on increasing sand and land value as this participates in the narrative where land owners are key to our ecosystem. We should reward the ones who are actively participating. And staking is part of the equation. Okay. Yeah, that's a good why. Go to how. We are requiring a 750,000 sand total budget that will be spread till December 31st, 2024, to add 750,000 sand to the total sand pool currently allocated for the staking by the sandbox from the Dow staking treasury. Okay. So they want to increase the current staking pool by 750,000 sand. If I've interpreted this correctly. All right. The win. As long as this decision is approved, the sandbox DAO will send the total budget, 750,000 sand, to the sandbox treasury. Uh, I think the wording there is off a little bit. The treasury is where the money is now. Um, tell when uh, you go to the dashboard. So this is the budget and allocation here. And this is the treasury. 2024 budget, 25 million sand. So I'm thinking that what they want to do here is increase this 900,000 by 750,000. So we're talking 900,000 plus 750,000, 1.6 million sand. So. I think that's what this is that saying. I think. I'm actually not sure. Is this staking budget dedicated to the staking? Okay, so that, that probably does mean plus 900,000. Where is the money coming from? I don't know. I, I don't know where this is coming from. Maybe it's coming from the sandbox game. Um, we'll keep reading. Maybe it'll tell us. To the sand. So, as long as this decision is approved, the sandbox DAO will send the total budget, 750,000 sand, to the sandbox treasury so they can increase the loot pool starting on the first week of August. So, they want to do this within 30 days. Okay. Who? Remy Bompar, Director of Land Ecosystem. At the sandbox, his X profile is Bell. Let's uh, take a look. Lands director. Yeah. All right, let's drop him a follow. Let's, uh, Remy, we're reviewing your SIP now. Sit live via Twitch right now. Let's 
Great idea. I'm loving what I'm reading so far. Let's tag the sandbox DAO. Oh, I have spoken to uh, to Remy before. Uh, if, I'm pretty sure it was Remy when he first got on, and he and he asked everyone, all the landowners, to schedule a time with them, just to get an idea of who uh, who we are and what we were looking for. So, oh, cool. That's picture with Seb. Nice. So, there we go. So there's your SIP author for number seven. Council recommendation is neutral. What does that mean? That's the first time I've seen that. What does neutral mean? Huh. Let's, uh, let's mark that one red because that is the first time we've ever seen anything not positive. I'd like to know what that's supposed to mean. Let's um, let's find out. So who's on it? It's so let's go to the sandbox dial. The sandbox game, All right? And then we have Cyril Forte. We have Sebastian. Then we have. Uh, Yat, Sue, and we had Fred, sorry, an M, Montagnon, then we have uh, Shannon, Shannon Snow, yep. and let's see, I'm, miss I'm missing one, aren't I? Who am I missing? Take a look. John Michael Elhan. Right, he's the founder of a Grail, which also founded Ledger. So, and that was, I, and I'm not sure if he has a Twitter. John. Go get lucky. No. Try and Google it. There he is. J.M. Palehan. Okay. Hey, Sandbox Council. I was reviewing SIP 7. That was the staking budget. And I saw for the first time that it was marked neutral. And let's include the smiley face. Let's look like it's just that smiley. Not smiley face. That. There we go. Neutral. Mark neutral for council recommendation. What does this mean? And bam. And there we go. Let's um let's include a little picture on it, yeah. Yeah. 
picture. There we go. Big Sandbox Council, and this is the Advisory Council. Yeah. For the, for the, the special council. Okay. Yeah. I was reviewing step seven, taking budget. And saw first time that it was marked neutral for council. That council recommendation marked it neutral. What does this mean? us understand what this means please and thank you oh. yeah. see if anything happens out of it so the council recommendation is neutral Okay, interesting. I'd love to know what that means. So background context. Landowners are the cornerstone of our community representing over 25,000 people globally and owning more than 130,000 land. That is a great quantifier. Let's keep that. 2022, we launched an airdrop of sand to landowners based on their token allocation specific traits and land locations given the evolving market. We need to carefully manage the distribution of sand and the value we place on our community. Rather than conducting another sand airdrop, we aim to support our active and committed landowners. Okay. These key stakeholders who contribute to the appreciation of land and sand values can participate in staking. Yeah, that, that would keep the value inside. That would keep the value inside. Yeah inside the the community so that's good I, I i support that okay uh, next, rather than conducting another, no, we were that, talked about that paragraph. Staking involves locking a certain amount of cryptocurrency in a wallet to support blockchain operations, earning rewards in return, usually in the form of additional tokens. Staking has been available in the sandbox environment since September 2022, accessible here. Good. Good on you, Remy, for including the link. And uh, lately, I think probably about eight months now, Sandbox uh, region locked all of the American American IPs out of their their front end on Sandbox game staking, so you can't stake more. However, you can stake if you do it on the uh, PolyScan contract. URL. There's a video out there. I uh, don't know where it is right now, but there's a video that shows you how to do that. So you can do it via the contract, which is the same thing that you do on this website. It just does it in a much more friendly manner. With 20 million sand currently locked by 4,500 stakeholders, it's also a great one. We have distributed over 8.8 .8 million sand to our landowners thus far. I'm digging the bits, sound bites here. To further incentivize participation, we propose allocating a portion of the DAO's budget to the landowner pool and increasing the APY for the second half of the year. Nice. This will boost APOI. Current rate is around 5% during this period, assuming the number of stakers remains stable. Cool. cool. So this would increase it by 750,000. Okay, so it would deduct it from the 900,000. It's currently in the budget. 
on the uh, uh, the allocation. So it would be on the dashboard. Loud fair strikes again. Description, we will allocate a portion of the Dow's budget, specifically 750,000 sand, to enhance the landowner's taking pool. This additional budget will be distributed over a set period, thereby increasing the overall reward volume for landowners. Okay, so maybe it's time for me to unveil my accounting. So this is the one I said I was almost done with. So for SIP 7, under staking, it's going to be a reduction. 750,000. Cool, which will leave 150,000 out of a $900,000 budget for 2024. That's the proposition there. Okay. And it says it's going to raise the current rate, which is the APY, which is currently 5%, to some unknown number, it doesn't say. Okay. Go, we will allocate a portion to enhance. There we go. This additional budget will be distributed over a set period. Thereby increasing the overall reward volume for landowners. Set period. I wonder what the significance of that is. Does that mean that if they do it all at once, then it won't? Maybe it won't. Um, it won't give the in increase in APY. The DAO will decide whether to implement this operation. Sure. On approval, the DAO will transfer the funds to the Sandbox blockchain team. Did not know that. It makes sense that there would be a blockchain team who would then allocate the new budget to the staking pool. Users can take advantage of this enhancement by staking SAND tokens in the pool dedicated to landowners. As a reminder, each land allows its owner to stake up to 2,000 SAND. I really like the way Remy has put this together so far. He walks it, he builds knowledge. Rationale benefit. Landowners have been requesting more rewards for some time. True. Especially as land prices have been dropping. Very true. It's currently 0.1 ETH. We believe that providing additional value to landowners presents a significant opportunity, but we want to ensure that these rewards benefit only our active members. Okay. We emphasize the importance of remaining engaged with within the sandbox community. Cool. Only users who stake in the landowner pool will be eligible for these enhanced rewards. Currently, the weekly reward pool is... 15,000 sand, which averages out to approximately 3.5 sand per week per staker by increasing the pool 47,000, which 750,000 divided by 23 weeks, we can potentially raise it to 7 per Oh, oh, I see. You're not just going to increase the, the overall locked value. You are, you are giving out 750 sand on top of the, the average sand earned in the seven day period. Cool. No, that, that, that makes, okay. Okay. So the blockchain team, I guess, would receive the money and instead of staking it, they would then dish it out. And that's why he says, that's why Remy says that he wants to do it over a period of time. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Let's see. Let's um let's apply a different layout here.
down a little bit. Sip eight after this. Okay. So good to know. So weekly reward pool is fifty five thousand or fifteen thousand. Averages out to three point five sand per week per staker by increasing the pool to forty seven thousand. Potentially raises rewards to seven sand. Assuming the number of active landowners remains stable, and the total value locked persists at this level. Cool. Okay. We believe that this initiative will not only address the concerns of our landowners, but also reinforce the value of staying active and engaged within the, our community. Our awarding those who contribute to the ecosystem, we aim to create a more dynamic, prosperous environment for all stakeholders. Okay. Risk analysis. Increased participation is one of the advantages. Attract more stakers, higher reward, and attract more participants, increasing the overall stake and security of the network. Okay. Greater network activity, more stakers can lead to higher transaction volume and greater engagement with the network. Second advantage, market demand. Token appreciation, increased demand for the staking token can drive up its price as more people buy it to stake and earn higher rewards. Enhance liquidity, higher rewards can boost liquidity as more tokens are bought and staked, potentially leading to more trading activity. Okay, third advantage. Competitive edge, differentiation. Offering higher rewards can differentiate the staking programs from competitors, making it more attractive to potential stakers. Increased adoption. This can lead to a broader adoption of the network and its ecosystem, as higher rewards might entice users from other platforms. Okay. Just going to be my notes. And then on here, we'll do uh, thoughts. And then I will paste these thoughts into the forums. That's where they are right now. So, what do I think so far? Now, nah, let's, let's go through the whole thing first. Risks, inflationary pressure, token inflation, doubling the reward often means increasing the supply of tokens, which can lead to inflation and reduce the value of the token if demand doesn't keep pace. I thought that that was an advantage. Token appreciation. Increased demand for the staking token can drive up its price. So there's kind of like a yin and yang going on there. Second risk, market volatility, price swings. An increase in staking rewards can lead to significant market volatility as speculators buy in for short-term gains leading to potential price swings when they exit. Dumping risk. Once the rewards are distributed, there is a risk that stakers might sell off their earned rewards, leading to a sudden drop in token price. Okay. Considerations for mitigation. Gradual increases. Implementing reward increases gradually can help mitigate inflationary pressure and market shocks as per a weekly staking reward. Oh, so that's why you want to do it over time. Not all at once. Makes sense. Transparent communication. Clearly communicating the reasons for and the structure of reward increases can help maintain community trust and support. Dynamic adjustments. Building in mechanisms to adjust rewards based on network conditions and participation can help maintain balance, stability, sustainability. Okay. Implementation plan. Launching between July 22nd to July 25th because it matches perfectly with the blockchain operations conducting the rewards for the next four weeks. Okay, it's going to be a tight window because 14 days from, I think it goes to public view for 14 days or seven days. And then 14 days after that, I don't think you're going to make it. Even if you do 14 days today, you're still not going to make it. So you have to wait until probably the next month, I suppose. 
Resource required. Over 23 weeks, we will allocate 750,000, which is 23 sand per week. Oh, per week for 23 weeks. So the DAO can send the full amount so the blockchain team can set up the staking pool properly without creating delays. Okay. The sand will be deployed on Polygon as per the usual staking program. We won't create a new pool of staking, stacking, staking. It will be directly be added to the existing landowner reward pool. So it will be added. And I guess he estimated that it will give a increase of up to seven sand per staker. Okay. I don't know the math well enough to say, but I believe him. We can measure the number of stakers staked volume during the period of activation. We can also track land and sand prices and also claim rate of staked funds. Okay. Appendix. Alternatives considered. We also thought about airdropping. You did mention that, yeah. Opening a claim to landowners. But we uh, felt that it wouldn't target the really active people, and we also wanted to increase the rewards to stakers who are here for the long run. Yeah, I agree with that. Because the, the claim, when you drop it, it'll drop across all the, the, the profiles, and then it'll some people won't remember to click claims. Unless you're in the, the unless you're in it all the time, it's very easy to miss. So yep. And then discussion. Join thoughts on discourse. Sip actives. Okay. So we'll definitely I'll definitely uh, give my thoughts there. And here is the snapshot. So it hasn't started yet. It will start July 10th, so tomorrow. Yes, no abstain, and we need a 30 million quorum, which was very difficult to get for our first community set. So we'll see how that works. Although, I have a feeling this is going to reach a quorum a lot faster because the author is Remy, who is part of the Sandbox team, so I'm sure he will benefit in some way from the the power of the Sandbox's team, which is you know, more likely, I guess, to promote their own. We'll see. We'll see. And everything else looks the same. In snapshot. Cool. So what are my thoughts? Let's switch over for a second. My thoughts, I like the idea of it. I'm glad he spelled it out the way he did because I wasn't sure if the implementation was specific enough to really communicate to me what was happening. But he did. He did do that. He made sure to specify that it would be 750,000 sand over 23 weeks, and he anticipates an end result of increasing the current 5%, uh, which yields about 3.5 sand per week per staker, to 7. So that's more than doubling. Or that is doubling. That is doubling it. So, cool. Cool, I think that's a good idea. It does only benefit the landowner, so let's let's do this. My thoughts are, uh, what are the pros? Seems to incentivize the right thing, which is uh, loyalty. So that's the same thing the Mochaverse is doing right now with their airdrop. So loyalty and and what? Loyalty and not activity because if you're already staked, would you stake more? You might, yeah, if, if you get double. Sure. Loyalty and activity. Sure. Uh, cons. Only targets landowners. And I think, as he mentioned, that means only 25,000 people. And what did we learn about how many P 
people there are in Sandbox. Uh, I don't recall, but it's a lot more than 25,000. With 20 million sand currently locked by 4,500 stakers. So, not even 25,000. Only targets. So, it has the ambition to target 25,000 landowners. So, they, he wants to increase both the amount of currently locked sand, which is 20 million, and increase the number of stakers from 4,500 to a maximum of 25,000. Right? So, let's, yeah. So seems to incentivize the right thing. Uh, has the potential to, to increase 4.5 thousand stakers to 25k land owners right so that's a good that's a good thing that's the what else is the con uh only targets land owners seems expensive seems expen um seven is let's look at the the budget how much was it again so of nine hundred thousand let's do a quick little so it's um, seven hundred fifty thousand divided by nine hundred thousand. That's not what I wanted. Seven hundred fifty thousand divided by nine hundred thousand gives us eighty three percent. So this is eighty three percent of the staking budget. That's a lot. That's a lot in one go. A lot in one go for it to only affect. You know what? Now we need to calculate numbers. But the good news is, is Seb has said many times how many people there are. How many? So it's 330,000 creators. Players. One. It says it every now and again. Five point eight million wallets. So let's let's stick with that number. So it has five point eight million wallets. Across a thousand experiences. Okay. Landowners. Okay. Uh, and landowners, 25K, only represents, that's going to be a really, really small number. Uh, what was it? 5.8 million wallets. Oof! 0.4% of the 5.8 million wallets in Sandbox. This was per um, NFC Lisbon. Yeah, that's the best I can find right now. 5.8 million wallets means that those wallets could be staking as well. The regular pool. So, I don't know. I think it's a good way to start, though. Targets the most, not active, but targets the most. 
not even invested. It targets the most. I don't know. Maybe it's not a pro. But I guess targets uh, the most invested, maybe, because land is one of the most expensive things. Invested. Investors and in sandbox. And sand fam. Members of San Fam. Cool. Yeah, I think that's that's good. Boost APY. Doubling of uh doubling of sand. Per week from 3.5 to 7 is very enticing and could be foundation for more. And if successful, could be a Foundation for more sips. Okay. I think we're good on that one now. Let's sip seven. Sip seven. Staking budget for landowners by Remy. All right, let's hit up sip number eight. Ocho. I'll just do it on here. Easier to read. All right. Sip eight. Game jam. Paris City jam. Oh, this is probably the thing that that Panda Pops announced not long ago, where she was going to somehow the community was going to vote on the Paris City jam, and as I see the current results. That is exactly what's about to happen. Quorum of 30 million will be required, but everyone will get to choose who they want to vote for. That's kind of cool. I really like that idea. That's novel. Go ahead and just put that pro. Novel idea to allow votes for game city jams on chain and people can vote for multiple so it, it, it takes advantage of the blockchain yeah so sip 8 game jam paris city jam tldr vote for the best experiences of the paris city jam the y is reward best creators and select who will be published on the paris estate oh okay how? Games will be playable either through a direct link on the game client or in the game maker draft gallery. Mix. When? Experiences are live on the map on July 30th. Again, I don't think you can make it unless it goes to vote before July 16th. Because once it hits July 16th, it'll have to be on there for 14 days, which is July 30th. Council recommendation is neutral again? What is going on? What does this mean? I don't... 
I don't get it. It's not obvious to me what council recommendation neutral means. Does this mean that the whole council majority voted um, that they didn't like it? Does this mean that they don't believe that it follows the vision, but they're willing to let it go because it doesn't outright go against the vision? I'm not sure what this means. And in fact, for this is put question, what does neutral a neutral in EU council recommendation mean? Yeah, let's find out. Okay. Sip details. This is not a very long one, too, so we might be able to get through this quite quickly. So, background context. Sandbox Game Jams are creator contests open to anyone passionate about creating games. We invite you to enter our viral eco vibrant ecosystem where creators come together to make their dreams come true and build our platform's future. Okay? Only your imagination sets the limits. Let's build the metaverse together. This particular city jam, Paris, encouraged creators to recreate Parts of the famous city gaining inspiration from its monuments and neighborhoods, but also in its rich culture and history. Because, yes, creators can select any time era when they want to picture the city. More info on the city jam here. Oh, there's a... I'm going to take you to a, an article. Right, right, right. Yeah, I do remember some of this one. First place is 3,000 sand. Oh, first through ninth place. 1,000. 500 sand for 10 through 15. So the contest goes live. Submission closes on June 27th. Public vote ends July 3rd. Okay, so she, she is accounting for it. She is accounting for the two weeks. Dow votes open. Huh. How did she know? It's interesting. That means there's a there's a certain amount of cooperation going on in the background between the Dow Foundation and the Sandbox. Um, because this was published some time ago. Yeah. June June seventh. So this was published over a month ago. Right? And they knew then that it would it would reach the Dow pass public vote. Uh, really, uh, public comment. It would then reach the Dow for voting on July 10th, a month later. So, if if, sh if they already knew that this was going to reach the Dow, then, then there was some sort of heavy coordination going on. And this was only a few days, by the way, only a few days, a week after it was announced on May 28th, the Dow itself. So, interesting. Interesting. Nothing wrong going on here, but that, that is an interesting amount of coordination going on. Well, let's put that uh let's put that in my thoughts. <laughs> uh, let's go with neutral. So neutral was the medium article. Let's link it. The medium article was on July seventh. So it's 
edit the slide and link it. Okay. Medium article on 7 June 24. This was only, all right, so last week, 7 June. So this is only a week and a half, 1.5 weeks after 28 May Sandbox DAO announcement. Projected a timetable where DAO vote occurs 10 July. That's one month later. So we'll, just, we'll say that's that's interesting. That is an interesting fact. Not saying anything was wrong. That is an interesting fact. That means there was there's quite a bit of coordination going on ahead of time. That's what that means. They knew then that the, the public comment would end and it would go to vote tomorrow. And then there there's 14 days. So it, it, it does abide by the rules. So that's cool. I, I really like that. All right, let's keep reading. We're on creator selection. So it gives a bunch of the selection submissions. So Graft Palm, Muse Genie, Sertaj, Addy, Beyond, Miss My Reality, PGV Lab, Mont Parnassi, Bellingers, Biafiel. Cool name. DSB Gamker. Gamker. Also a cool name. Yuri. Hey, Yuri. I've seen him a number of times in AMAs around Sandbox. It's neat. Uh, J Rung. NFT Wu Jian. Ryan. Biagi. Cool. Rationale and Benefit. Sandbox is an exciting ecosystem where the lines between creators and brands are blurred and everyone comes together to build the future of the platform. True. Whether you have dreams of creating your own gaming franchise or work alongside your favorite brand, there is a special place for you in the Sandbox. Also true. Regardless of your experience level, game jams have much to offer for all creators. It requires quite a bit of time, uh, especially if you want to win. You have to learn... You have to learn how to do it. Benefiting the DAO community and its content creators. Exciting prizes. Reward your favorite experience with exciting prizes. Publishing opportunities and recognition within the sandbox community. Exposure. Game jams are a great way to show off your game development prowess to become a recognized game designer in the sandbox ecosystem while also gaining valuable feedback and connections within the community. Build your resume with strict Strict time constraints. Also, one of the reasons why I said earlier that it um, it is something that, while it does have much to offer all, for all creators, there is uh, if you've got to pay attention, you got to work fast, and that's why I said this. So, build your resume with strict time constraints. These contests offer the creators a great opportunity to rapidly build your resume as a creator and show the world what you are made of. Skill enhancement. Sharpen your game maker skills and experiment with new ideas. The game jams are an opportunity to learn, grow, and refine your competencies. Community spirit. Take part in a vibrant community of fellow creators where you can share your progress, exchange ideas, and collaborate with others who share your passion for game development. I'm willing to bet you this was copy and pasted from the article. Let's just copy and paste a small phrase. No, not that one. That didn't work. Maybe refine your competencies? No. Maybe build your resume? No. Maybe just resume. No. Okay. This sounded very canned. Like a, like a PR team wrote it. So I, I thought that it might have been come, it might have come from the Medium article, but maybe not. 
Maybe it's somewhere in the FAQ, the docs. Nothing about resume. Okay. Cool. Looks like they wrote it for the SIP. Good on them. Risk analysis. Minimum risk for the platform. The experience will nevertheless be reviewed by our internal team to ensure respect of the city jam rules and DAO guidelines. All applicants must have completed KYC, which is know your customer. For the wallet providing the registration form, read more about KYC and Sandbox other terms and conditions. Implementation plan, June 27th in the submission phase. July 3rd, qualification for DAO vote. I think what they meant was public comment. Uh, July 10th, DAO vote starts. So let's look at it. July 3rd, so a week. Oh, seven days. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I probably need to go look at the back. Look at the process submitted. There. Maybe I can put it in the SIP process. Seven day reaction. There we go. Put it there. All right. So there's a seven day community reaction and then a 14 day vote remember to fix my uh, fix the one where i did that i think it was with pepe i think that's the one where i did i did no zip process copy and paste that So community review, seven days. Voting. Cool. There, we added it here now. All right. Dow vote closes 24th. Experiences are live on the map. On the map six days later. Resources required. Cash. Cash price. Cash prize for top nine voted submissions: three thousand sand each. Three thousand sand times nine equals twenty-seven thousand. Just the top nine. But the article mentioned that there was a, a step down from that. There we go. 10th to 15th place was 500 sand. Is that not in here? Nope, not mentioned. Okay. So it is just going to be a cash prize for 27 sand, 27,000 sand total. Let's update our little accounting checkbook. So we have, where will it go? It will go game contest, most likely. All right, budget dedicated to game experience. Yeah, that sounds about right. This is SIP number eight. And it is projected to take out 3,000 sand times nine people for 27,000 sand. That'll decrease the budget from 2.5 million sand to 2.47 million sand. So that that seems like a pretty good, pretty good one. Plenty of budget for game content. Okay. So 
So let's put that under pros. Uh, budget request is as long as it's just that. I'm worried, not worried, but I'm wondering about the the tenth place thing. So if it's if it's twenty seven thousand of two point five million, that is point one percent. Point one percent. Yeah, point one percent. So budget request is zero point one percent of two point five million for game content category. Percent of staking budget category. All right, so that seems like a pretty good use of resources. Jam. I really want to know what this uh, council neutral thing is. That's odd to me. That's odd. Monitored metrics to track success. NB of experiences published on Paris State. I don't know what NB is. KPIs, key performance indicators, traffic KPIs. So I guess that means they're going to look into something. Uh, not something. Uh, they'll look into how many unique users visit them, I guess. But that'll be a question I have out of this. Which is, what does NB of experiences mean? monitored metrics all right there we go voting options you will be asked to spread your voting among the 15 qualified submissions of the city jam best nine Experiences will be awarded 3,000 sand as rewards and will be published on a dedicated estate. Okay, you should vote on the experience that recreated Paris City in the most immersive way, its monument, neighborhood, or just a distinctive vibe. All right, there's the article. I think it's the same one. It is. To test the experience, install. Yeah. Okay, cool. No, I, I like this. Very well made. Good picture. It's the same picture as the article. Yep, it sure is. So cool. No, I, I support. I support both of them. So what would be what would be the con? Interesting. What would be the con? Let's look at that. So we have A sip that talks about the game jam. This is a city jam. What I don't know is how many participants are in the jam. So there are one, two, three, five, six, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So fifteen contestants. Council recommendation is neutral. Same question to them. Right, what does a neutral council recommendation mean?
I just copy paste in what it is. And oh, I already said the Medigum article. 14 contestants. Regardless of your experience and exciting stuff. Minimum risk. Nevertheless, be reviewed. So they're, what they're basically saying is they don't think there is a risk. Resources required. Cash prize. We have the formula. Good on them for giving the formula. Monitored success. Okay. And they ask you to vote for the most immersive. And the what is going to be vote. Cool. All right. So those are my thoughts on it. It's a novel idea. It's very cool. I, I like the fact that we're trying to vote on chain. Budget request is very minuscule. And it seems like there's... Uh, I've seen game jams. I mean, they're all over sandbox.game. So, game jams are prominently featured in the events. All right, so in the events, oh, need to show my control. So down here in the events, there's Builders Challenge Two. There's the July. Avatar, Last Valley, uh, Builder's Launchpad, Builder's Launchpad, Builder's Launchpad, more Builder's Launchpad. Where were they? They just saw it. City Jam. Oh, Paris City Jam. There's one. There's more jams out here. I know I've seen them. So many of them. There's a game jam right there. There's another game jam. So there, there they are. Game jam. She inspires. Quite quite a bit of game jams going on, and cool. I support, so I will copy and paste my comments into the discourse article. So let's go ahead and get that link. Go to sip eight. All right, and then course link. I like this format. I like going through the sip as it comes online. And then I can get my thoughts down like this and just copy and paste it right in. And participate. That's pretty cool. The discourse link for you. Six, seven. All right, what are the cons? The cons are, I don't know if there are any cons that I can think of. Doesn't say who the author was, actually. What was the who section? There is no who section. Who is the author of this sip? There we go. So that's my next question. All right. So what's left? What are the cons? Let's go. Let's get at least one con and then we can be done for today. Mm. Con might be. On. Gotta be something. Gotta be something out there.
I can't think of anything right now. I think it was pretty well put together. It was concise. It spoke to the value. Maybe that was the one thing. Light on impact. Unknown because the article, uh, the SIP, doesn't communicate the expected impact from increased traffic or visibility, uh, Sanfam, visibility. Uh, let's, now let's put as a con, the unknown impact. Unknown impact. Yeah, I think that's good enough. That works out. Okay, so we discussed we and analyzed of SIP7 and analysis of SIP8, SIP being Sandbox Improvement Proposal. They just released, I think, today. So I am, this is hot off the press. Cool. And we'll we'll end it here. So we did our analysis of SIP seven and eight. Before we close out, we will raid someone. Hopefully there's someone on sandbox. But so that closes out surprise episode five. Uh, episode Yeah. Episode one was Community Reaction Part 1 with Andy, Richie, and Hoddle. Hoddle Hill. And Episode 2 was a look into the SIP process with Pepe. That was Magic Palette. SIP, uh, episode 3 was a look into the SIP process with Carol, who was the creator first SIP author. And Pepe's Magic Palette is still ongoing. It only has a few hours left. Two hours left. It's ending very soon. But oh, there's the blasted cloud fair forbidden again. But it's at like 99% yes. And it's reached quorum. So very likely to pass. And then not long ago, uh, Community Reactions Part 2 with Crafter and Joseph. So we got our, our reaction on the Sandbox DAO there. And then the surprise one, I decided to do this podcast for SIP 7 and 8, which just released and is about to go to vote here uh, very shortly. Yep. Uh, as you might see here, I do have uh, another podcast coming up. Episode 6, which is scheduled tentatively with Mocha CN, CN being the Chinese community for Mochaverse. And I'll be doing that with Old One. He, uh, I reached out to him through the through the through trying to help Pepe reach a quorum. I started looking at some people who he hadn't touched out, he hadn't reached out to yet. And uh, G mentioned that some of the Mochaverse people were major landowners and didn't look like they had voted yet. So he mentioned Old One. I looked up Old One on Twitter. And sent him a a tweet, and turned out that uh, we reached an agreement on a podcast where we can kind of ask him about the Mocha CN. Where I think G mentioned that Mocha CN is the the biggest delegate 
or a delegation within the Mochaverse, and the Mochaverse has a, a large member base that owns and then participates in the sandbox. So uh, a potential look into a community, what they like to do, what how they vote, and what they look for when they vote. So really interested in that. And then I am putting the finishing touches on my a dive into the Sandbox Foundation articles and documents. That's all the legal stuff that I did in a previous setup podcasts and it'll i'm trying to get cyril there who is the the sandbox dow architect so i've i have a list of questions and analyses and remarks that i noted as i read through both the articles of association and the articles of the memorandum so that was the what we call the bylaws and, and also the articles of incorporation like the Constitution. So I would look very much forward to getting Cyril in on that podcast episode as soon as I'm able to get in touch with him. So Cyril, if you're watching this, please uh, reach out to me. Uh, I've, I've tweeted at you, sent you a LinkedIn message. So if you are able to, please, please respond so we can talk about being on this, this episode or diving into the Sandbox Foundation. I know you mentioned in an art in AMA about three or four weeks ago, you asked if anyone had read it, and there weren't many people who did raise their hand. So I read all of it, and I made my notes, and there's some things I'd really like to ask about to understand better, so that the community can understand what is, uh, what is the foundation of the Sandbox Foundation. So, cool. Thank you all. For your time, I'm going to go ahead and find someone to raid. And yeah, let's look first in the sandbox. Is there anyone? Yep, little UGC. Little UGC is. So let's, let's raid little UGC. Oh, it's good. Fred and Ferd. Raid Fred and Raid button. Button's always hard to find. There we go. All right, we're going to start the raid and outro so thank you all appreciate it and have a good night